um in like 2011 2012 ish i was uh at this trading company and they had a very old c++ code base and i was having an argument with the very conservative like he uh, head programmer because I wanted to use this new C++ feature called ranged fors, which, you know, is like what all other languages have for going over a, a container, you know, for the, the equivalent of for I in thing. Um, in C++, it's for auto X colon something, right? Um, and it should be equivalent to iterating over all of the elements in the thing. And obviously, the thing is probably, say, a vector, which is to say a variable length array. It's just a pointer and a, and a size is what it really is down under the hoods. And the pointer to points to the first element, and the size is how many elements there are in them. And so, you know, normally you get the size, and you start your counter at zero, and you work for through, you know, pointer bracket zero, pointer brackets one, and all that kind of good stuff. And the compiler, of course, rewrites it behind the scenes to be like a pointer that walks along the the memory locations one after another and that's all great and good but it's a pain to write that and it's kind of error prone you can, we've all done things where we've used the wrong size or we've used the wrong kind of iteration or whatever and so c plus plus 11 came along and said we should make a, this a language uh, facility but we'd been bitten by this before we were also had some java code and in java if you loop over um and again, not to bash languages, but this is just a side effect of the way that Java works at the time. And it may have changed since. Caveat, caveat. Uh, <laughs> in Java, if you had a container and you looped over it using an index, that was garbage free, right? You were just making an int on the stack and you were bumping it forward until you got to the end of the size of the container and you were accessing the container. And, and as provided you weren't doing anything that was generating garbage, you were done, right? Beautiful. But if you did the equivalent of 4x in whatever, I can I forget the Java syntax right now, behind the scenes, it created an iterator object that was then the thing that held the where I am in this object and you called next on it. And that's what was happening. So it was syntactic sugar for rewriting it that way. And at the time, they were, there was a trading system that was written predominantly in Java and they would train themselves into like writing garbage free Java, which is about as horrible as it sounds. It's like takes all the benefits of a really useful and easy to write language like Java and throws them away and tries to write C code in Java, but without any of the benefits of like memory checkers and things, because no one's expecting you to do this kind of thing. Anyway, that's that's a whole other rant. So, right. um, so understandably, we were, they were a bit reluctant to just with gay abandon start changing the way we wrote our C plus plus code because it was very performant and they wanted to keep it that way. So I got stroppy. Um, which is British for angry, uh, got upset <laughs> about it all. And then I um, said, well, okay, come here. And I got Jordan to sit next to me. I said, all right, let me show you. And so we were r experimenting backwards and forwards with like snippets of code where I was turning this flag on and, and compiling it one way or the other. And eventually, be the, being the Unix heads that we were, I, um, I wrote like the, the command line of like run GCC on a file, output to dash as in stood out um, pipe it through c++ filt which then un demangles all the symbols pipe it through some sed to get rid of some of the nonsense that was that the, the assembler outputs and then i ran that in a watch which means it runs it every mm. second and just displays the output and then in the tmux session i halved and on the other side i ed opened up the editor to the file that the other side was you can see where this is going um right. <laughs> the other com the side was was editing so i had the editor on one side and i had the results of the compiler at once a second on the right hand side and then we went back and forth between the various things we tried different compiled settings and we you know we, we kind of fiddled around and, and i was able to show him that actually it was one instruction cheaper to do it the other way for boring reasons that we don't have to get into and so anyway he was like fine with it and now around the same time that, that i was that we were doing this um joe the person who had dragged me across the uh from from google and dragged me to finance and then ultimately he joined me in chicago um he he was well, one of those polymath folks who knows how to do a bit of everything and um he um he had been dabbling in node js apps and so he was like forever knocking up node apps and showing you know little database cruddy things and um we'd done some uh previously at, at, uh, he showed me how to do them at google or whatever and anyway and so I, in the back of my head, I'm like, hey, I know how to wait web apps, you know, crap little web apps, but web apps nonetheless. I think I can take what I just did and put it in a little web app. And yeah, Compiler Explorer or GCC Explorer, as it was called then, was born. And it was, you know, a few hundred lines of code running in our, uh, on a machine that I had uh, set up in uh, the, the trading company at that time. And it 
proved very useful. You know, it doesn't take long to pull down a couple of off-the-shelf widgets for editors, and then, you know, you put a little bit of filtering in, and a Node app that runs a couple of hundred lines, runs the compiler, and then just pukes out the output and filters it in some way. Um, and, you know, it sat for a couple of months, and I thought, this is kind of useful, actually. And so at the time we were been um, experimenting with more and more open source stuff, the company was still very dodgy about, like, putting its name to anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but they said okay, you can open source this. It's not like competitive advantage or anything like that. Um, but, you know, you just can't put our name anywhere near it, you know, because they were worried about legal comeback or something like that. Anyway, their loss, um, <laughs> because, <laughs> cause, you know, um, in 2012, uh, I stood up an Amazon server running the same code base, having open sourced it. And, um, yeah, GCC Explorer was, was born. It has... It had a couple of compilers, and it was like four or five thousand lines of JavaScript and um, very simple Docker-based security. I'm going to put again air, air quotes around that. And there it sat for years, uh, and no one really used it that I knew of. Um, it was convenient. We still used it internally. Um, mm-hmm. It was dead handy for like trying out stuff. So you know, it, it grew so that you can change the compiler settings, you can change which sil- compiler you're using, and then as you're typing. For sh- given how much bad rap C++ gets for like slow compiles, for very small snippets, the compilers are blazing fast. It's just these giant monstrosities we tend to feed it. So if you're just looking at like a, a small loop or a couple of functions that call each other, it takes milliseconds to, to build. And so we can build and parse and send back to the, the website on the right-hand side the sort of annotated, syntax-highlighted, output of the compiler and it becomes a sort of interactive almost like a repl like you can mm-hmm. start tweaking going like what if i do i plus plus or plus plus i which of these is faster and you see that it makes no difference whatsoever and that's kind of it leads this sort of journey of discovery and immediacy that makes you kind of like really get a deeper understanding of what you're doing um but you know fast forward 12 years and it now is 60,000 lines of TypeScript. It is three and a half thousand different compilers which about three and a half terabytes of compiler <laughs> um it is um running on somewhere between anywhere between 8 and 15 aws instances at any one time varying different types we've got some that have gpus in them we have some that are running windows we have uh, the majority of them are running linux at some point we'll stand up some arm ones so we can do arm compilers as well and we have become a we um i'm not just a plural person i'm i we actually i've got a, a small team now it's open source and we've got like five or six people who are like who have the keys to my Amazon account and can um, administrate the site. And it's become kind of the de facto C++ paste bin stroke Mm -hmm. experimental thing. So by default, it shows the assembly output. And so I, I like to think that my contribution is putting assembly in front of people who would never have otherwise seen it, talking about those 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 flaws of and and abstraction layers it's like it really puts it right in the face of people and go like hey this is what really happens this is what your compiler does you may not think of it doing this but then obviously folks use it just as a general compilation tool and we now support that we can actually execute the code which is security wise terrifying yeah um, that you've you've you know, random you know what what is your website it's essentially a giant remote code execution service <laughs> you know <Right. laughs> and uh yeah right how are you securing it? I don't know. Some amateur people have looked at it and said it looks fine. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, we, it's, it's, it's become a, a rel- pretty significant second job. Um, it's a lot of fun when it's fun. It's a lot of toil when it's not. <laughs> um, again, I'm very, very lucky and blessed to have the number of uh, contributors that I have. And, as again, they can help out on the admin side as well you know it takes a lot of care and feeding to keep a website up especially one that has you know daily builds of all the major compilers we have our own ci infrastructure we have our own load balancing stuff we have our own it's it's huge now (laughs) um yeah and i don't tend to use it as much as i used to because my job has changed and for a long while i was writing (laughs) python all day and it's like what am i doing with myself (laughs) right (laughs) but i'm glad to say i'm starting to use it again i'm back writing c++ in my day job again so awesome Um, but yeah most folks know know me from that is the the short answer um and i think you know you've been very kind by calling it compiler explorer which is what i call it but i hosted it on my my personal domain and so most people didn't know that that was my name they just thought it was a cool name which which it is i'm very blessed and lucky to have the name that i was given right um but a lot of folks um yeah didn't realize and then 
um they were surprised when i turn up and i said well, yeah and they're like hey wait like the website i'm like yeah i guess <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah i've i've definitely uh uh had had plenty of uh interactions with folks where where they've said to uh to just god bolt it so um <laughs> yeah, right that's it's it's i know i i did so i have got you know you can get to it at compilerexplorer.com as well because that's my sort of hedge for the future if i ever need to get my domain name back or whatever um right. but um yeah i have now i took advice from a friend who said look took me to one side and said don't keep you know you can call it that right you know this is like google never calling it googling something they call it web searching or whatever because it kind of sort of devalues it and to, to get in on the you know the joke as it were is, is not 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 wise but right. um I was, you know, I was poised to completely just go to the compiler explorer name, get rid of the the, the vanity domain name away, um, and they said, "This is a gift horse. Don't don't look it in the mouth, right? You know, this is yeah. people think of it as a verb now or a noun, and so you should accept that." And I'm like, I, I, so I begrudgingly do now. And in fact, my LinkedIn profile I think says, you know, programmer and sometime verb or something right. like that. So you know, I've kind of I've kind of accepted it now and come to peace with it. 